Is. All right, guys, well, welcome. What do I have here? A pumpkin, that's right. How many pumpkins do you think there are in the world? One. One. <laughs> this is it, guys. We have the pumpkin. <laughs> that is so cute. See, I always let the kids talk because you never know what they're going to say, right? Like I was at a show once in the, in the middle of my program, and a little girl stood up and she said, my daddy's a lawyer, do you know what he named me? I said, I don't know what. She said, Sue. <laughs> that's a true story, by the way, okay? Uh, so that's why you always let the kid. So there's one pumpkin in the world. No, we, we, we have one pumpkin here, but how many do you think are in the whole world? How many do you think, Noah? 100,000 million, 100,000? That's a lot. That's a pumpkin with a lot of, a lot of zeros after it. Yeah, I, there's probably millions, maybe even billions of pumpkins in the world. But you know what? They're all different. Just like there's billions of people in the world, and there have been billions of people ever since the world started. And you are different than everybody else. Isn't that great? God made us all different. We have our own talents. We have our own uh, gifts that we can use. I guess gifts and talents are kind of the same thing, right? We have our own desires and wants and everything. And God knows you. He chose you. He chose you to love you. Isn't that awesome? Just like I picked this pumpkin. My wife picked this pumpkin and, <laughs> and brought it. Okay, God uh, let's just like she chose that pumpkin out of all the pumpkins that were in the store. And I don't know how many were in the store. Probably not 100,000 million billion. But, but there were a lot of pumpkins there. She chose this one. And we're going to do something special with this pumpkin. Carving it. You want to carve it? All right, I got a knife. But why, why is that important? Well, look what Ephesians says. He says, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him in love, he predestined us to adoption as sons and daughters through Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Now, that's a lot of words, kids, all right? That basically means God chose you and he loves you. He loves you even when you sin. He loves you even when you're not listening to your parents. He doesn't like it when you do that, but he loves you, right? Parents, you love your children all the time, right? Even if they do bad things? Yeah, right? Absolutely. Parents always love their children. They should anyway, and God does. God loves you. So we chose this pumpkin just like God chose you. Now here's the thing, though. It looks pretty good on the outside, right? Anybody ever seen the inside of a pumpkin when you carve it? Let me carve it for you right here. By the way, I'm cheating. It's already carved. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, this would be a 35-minute lesson of just getting through the pumpkin because it took us a while to do that. But inside of a pumpkin is what? Guts. Guts, right? A bunch of gook. Yuck. Let's get rid of that, okay? And by the way, we also uh, cheated because... Uh, well, first of all, I'm going to put my gloves on because I really don't want to get this stuff all over my hands. So there you go. There's one there. And one here. Okay, well, it's like I'm going to go going to do surgery on a pumpkin now. <laughs> it's alive! No, just kidding. All right, uh, let me see here. I have, oh, here we go. We could put all the guts in here and get rid of it. That's right, guys. You know what? The inside of a pumpkin doesn't look very good, does it? Does that look pretty good? It's disgusting, right? It's full of gook. Yuck. What's great about Christianity and about Jesus Christ and about God is that we can find examples of God's glory through nature because the God we believe in is the God that created everything. Amen? Now, analogies, parents, only go so far. All right? So we can think of this pumpkin, though, full of all this nasty, yucky stuff like the sin in our lives. Yuck. Yuck. There's a lot in there. You know what? I'm just going to shorten this process up and just dump it. <laughs> wow. Did you ever see that stuff come out so easily in a pumpkin before? Guess what? It doesn't. <laughs> Again, we, we carved it all up and put it back in for the lesson here, okay? We kind of cheated there, but that's all right. So yeah, 
even though uh, we have all that junk in us, and what, what do we call that junk that God doesn't like that we have in us? Anybody know what that's called? It starts with an S. That's right. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So what is a sin? Guys, think of, think of any sins? What's one? Pumpkin has seeds in it. That's not really a sin, but yeah, right, that's right. A sin is something you do that's not a good thing, right? Like, maybe you're angry and mean to your sister. Do you guys ever fight? Yeah. <laughs> One says no, the other says yes. <laughs> Mom and Dad, do they ever fight? Not really. Not really? That's great. Like yeah, okay, well, that's good. You're, you're doubly blessed then. <laughs> Our, our, our girls used to fight a little bit, and it was funnier because the younger one was tougher than the older one at the time, but not anymore. Victoria's a lot tougher now, but she's also older and stronger. Uh, well, I don't know. They're probably both strong. They probably both could beat me up if they wanted to, but anyway, uh, fortunately, they don't want to. They love me, uh, but the point is, is we have sin in our lives, and everybody has sinned. Jesus said, even if you think a bad thought about somebody... You're, you, it's like you've, you've killed them in your heart. That is sad, right? But God, God wanted to get rid of all the junk in our lives. So you know what he did? He sent Jesus for us. The Bible tells us that in Colossians 2.14 here, he says, Having canceled the certificate of debt, consisting of decrees against us, which was hostile to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having it nailed it to the cross. What does this mean? It means that Jesus went to the cross for us, boys and girls. The Bible tells us that if we sin, we die. And dying means not being with God forever. God didn't want that. He wanted to get rid of all that junk in us, right? And keep it so that we could be with him forever. Now, this is a lot of mess here. Let me get rid of some of this stuff here, okay? <clears throat> Anyway, so God, God went to the cross for us in his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus came, died on the cross for us so that we don't have to have that sin in our life. And not only then, don't let me get that pumpkin back here, okay? So we're looking at the pumpkin again, right? We've got, uh, we got all the junk out of it, okay? And Jesus went to the cross for us to remind us that God got rid of that sin. But the problem is, it's still hollow. You've got to fill it with something. Let's see, what does it say here? It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, this person is a new creation. A new creation. Not the old creation. The new creation. That's not a magic trick. I just switched pumpkins. <laughs> but it took us a while to do that, to make a new creation. It took me a while to do that, okay? And it says here that the old person, the old things have passed away. In other words, that junk, that sin that we had in our life, we don't need to even think about that anymore. God has taken care of that, and he's given us a new creation. That's kind of a happy face, right? Now, you've seen some pumpkins, I'm sure, that are kind of scary looking. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Disneyland used to have a pumpkin carver that would make the most incredible pumpkins. Uh, they would carve all the different villains and stuff on the pumpkins, but I'm not that talented. I made a happy face, okay? Very simple here. Uh, but again, uh, it's empty. Uh, so God has to put something in us because you know what? If you take something out of your life, something will probably fill that up with something else. Like, let's say you say, oh, I, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to watch as much TV later, okay? Well, something else will take that place. And God wants to fill... Yes, Noah, what's up? We got a question? Like filling up the pumpkin paper and make it a mechanical Like, what now? I'm sorry, make it a little louder? I couldn't hear you. Like, it's okay. Like you fill up the, the pumpkin... Right. Yeah, well, it's a jack-o'-lantern when you uh, make a face on it, right? And actually, guys, you know, today is uh, 
All Hallows Eve is the original thing because tomorrow is supposed to be is, is All Saints Day. And so uh, they, they actually used to put the pumpkins on, the, on, their, on their windows with candles in it to frighten away the evil spirits. But we don't need to worry about that. We have Jesus Christ, amen? And we have the Holy Spirit. God tells us that not only does He take away the junk from us, get away the sin, but He puts a light in us so that we will be a light for the world. Can we turn the light off over there? It might look a little better. I don't know. That's all right. Yes, the Bible tells us, Jesus says right here in uh, Matthew 5.14, you are the light of the world. All right? A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Your light must shine before people in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Now, what are good works? Good works are when we do good things. Now, good things don't get us into heaven. Only Jesus dying on the cross gets us into heaven. Amen? But we do good works so that people can see that we love God. Right? And when people see that we love God and we're doing those good works, I think it gives us then the right to share why we do the good works. All right? If you're going around and saying, Jesus is great and I love Jesus, and you're doing some bad stuff, who's going to listen to you? It's like he's living just like everybody else, right? But no. God wants us to do good works, not to earn our way to heaven, but to earn our way to tell people who Jesus is and what he did for us. And he put that light in us so that we can share it with everybody else, right? The light of the world is Jesus, and that light is shining in us when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior and start living for him and having the Holy Spirit in our lives. And that's what we're trying to do at this church and hopefully all the churches around the world is to have you guys learn more about that, grow in that, and understand who Christ is. And that's why we're here today. So we have a light in us, guys, that we can shine with a new face, a new creation, right? A new creation in God. And we don't have to have that junky sin stuff in our life anymore. Isn't that great? That's good news, amen? That is great news. You know, they say it's good news, but it's really great news, all right? The great news is it's taken care of. So you know what? Let's sing... This little light of mine, uh, it's a different version you guys are probably used to. I might have to uh, turn up the volume on the computer there. Uh, so stay right there. I'm going to get this ready for you. It's a, it's a song that a different choir did. It's really upbeat and fun. We listened to it while we were doing the, uh, the, pray, the, uh, the, the greeting this morning, right? The, the, the meet and greet. And we're going to sing this little light of mine. And then if anybody needs prayer for anything afterwards, I'll be around up here and you can come up and I'll be happy to pray with you, okay? All right, let's close in prayer this part though. Thank you, Lord, for watching over us, Lord. Thank you for taking the junk out of our lives, Lord. Thank you for giving us a new face, a new life, a new hope. Thank you for making us have a smile on our face and having a life with joy in you. Help us, Lord, to share that light with all that we come in contact with and let us be your light for the world. In Jesus' name, amen.